We're back with Chef Heinz at the Boom Boo Valley restaurant and we're ready to start preparing our roast suckling pig, which is a very unique experience for me. I've never cooked an entire pig before. It's certainly not an everyday occurrence. Good, so this is a special treat. Well, let's take a look at our pig. Our standard pigs are between six to eight kilos. Mm -hmm. When you get them from the butcher, make sure the inside is washed out properly. It's very, very clean. Right. And to just have a good look around that you don't have any hair around. Okay. If you have some hair, you just scrub it off as mm -hmm. well with the back of a knife. Perfect. And make sure the nails are clipped off. Correct, yes. Great. All right, well, let's go through our other ingredients. Here? Well, what we have here first, we have the shallots. Shallots? Garlic. Garlic in Bali uh, is very soft in its flavor. Right, so you would use less of Western you garlic. May could use a little bit less back home, okay. yes, correct. All right. Ginger, exactly the Ginger. same. The ones we have here is very small. Mm -hmm. It's very soft in its mm -hmm. flavor. The candle nuts, they got the name from the olden Dutch. They used them in the olden days as candle fuel. Really? You, in, uh, you ignite one of these candles, it will give you a very smoky flame which lasts 15, 20 minutes. They're so oily that you can actually light them on fire. Correct. Then again, in an off, uh, very often in Western countries, you may have a little bit more difficulties mm -hmm. finding. As yeah. a substitute, I always recommend to replace them with raw peanuts without the skin on. And here? Turmeric, there's one of the four ginger roots which we're using. And again, this one here is fresh one. If it's difficult to obtain, you could easy to find in Western countries. So don't go out and buy the powdered stuff anymore. Right. Just get the fresh one. Use it fresh, which is much, much better. Everything fresh is always better. This? We, in Bali, we call that Laos, or Galangal, as you would get it in the West. So Galangal in Bali is called Laos. Correct, Like yes. the country. Correct. Okay, and here we have some beautiful the, fresh chilies. Your taste may be too sensitive to these okay. little hot ones. They're very, very spicy. Very. You could very simply reduce them down or perhaps want to replace them with the bigger ones. Okay. Again, these ones you should then cut in half, remove the seeds, and then you use the same quantity as this one. Then you get flavor, but no heat. Okay, I understand. And this? Shrimp paste. Obviously, shrimp. Western noses are a little bit sensitive to this flavor. It, it adds it adds a lot of flavor. Remember, our little piggy is quite strong in its flavor. Right. So you need to offset strong flavors with okay. strong spices. With some other strong spices. Correct. And then it sort of meets in the middle. Absolutely correct. Perfect. OK, and this? Here we have a kaffir lime leaves. Oh, I love kaffir with lime leaves. With kaffir lime leaves, it smells what is very fabulous. important, you have to bruise it a little bit mm -hmm. before you release the oils. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and here we have some oil. Oil. Mm -hmm. In Bali, basically for all the dishes, we use coconut oil. Just simply forget about the coconut oil, right. but replace it with a simple vegetable oil. Not olive oil? Absolutely not olive oil. Okay. All, there's no such thing as olive oil here in Asia. All right, some gorgeous sea salt. Sea salt. Wherever would you find this on Bali? Everywhere. It's in a lot of Western countries. Coriander, fresh coriander, is so easy to obtain. Mm -hmm. So instead of using the fresh, the, the dry ones here, okay. you might want to have a generous handful of fresh coriander, which Why not would use add. The fresh if you go have for it. it. Absolutely, absolutely perfect. perfect. And what's this? A, a puree. All right. And so that's all it blend is. Blend turmeric with a bit of water. A little oil. bit of oil, a little pinch of salt, okay. which is and obviously it forms important a paste for flavor. To brush and Correct. baste the pig with. Turmeric has a very particular flavor, mm -hmm. and it, not, it, it gives some color, mm -hmm. it keeps the skin moist, mm -hmm. and by keeping it moist, it makes it nice and crispy, mm -hmm. and that's the whole idea, that when you eat the crispy skin, it's skin. like cracklings. Yeah. Lovely. Love it. All right, well, what will we do with all of these ingredients? Next step, basically, is very, very simple. Mm -hmm. We mix them all up in a bowl, mix them all together. put them into a food processor food or blender, processor, okay. and grind them to a fine Paste. A nice fine grind. Grind, mm -hmm. yeah. A stuffing which we then... Oh, it's a stuffing. It's a stuffing which Great. we then put into the, the opening mm -hmm. in the piglet. Mm -hmm. We close them, we roast them and then we eat that as a sauce. Mm, sounds fabulous. Delicious. Well, let's start making it. Let's go for it. So our stuffing is ready. Okay, and the let's rest now... Let's get started. The rest now is pretty simple. You're going to help me? Of course. So all we have to do now is we turn our little piglet. Mm -hmm. We pick it around. It's been all cleaned inside. It's been all cleaned. Dry them off nicely. All right. And what we should, what you should do now is you just scoop the stuffing inside the back. Really? You make small incisions with the knife Correct. to make it a little yes. bit easier so to push the skewer the through. Recipe. Just help it along a little bit. A chef and a surgeon. Yeah, though. It's just, it's important that we close. Make sure our little pig is nice and comfortable. Secure. So kind of you. <laughs> so concerned. Well, <laughs> look, 
we're going to have enjoy eating that so we give him as much respect as it deserves right? absolutely okay now okay. the last thing you can do now is you can take the turmeric oil and brush the chick the, the the piglet with a little paint. bit of the oil and paint them yes <laughs> okay well, how long will it take to cook in the oven? So what we're going to do first now is we put them inside the oven at relatively high heat, okay. about 220 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. High heat will close the pores, mm -hmm. will make sure that all the moistness stays inside. And ensure a crisp skin? Correct, yes. Then after 15, 20 minutes, we reduce the heat down to about 150, 160, mm -hmm. and then it will take two and a half to three hours until the that pig long? is done. Uh, what is then very, very important that we continuously brush continuously brush. brush the pick with the, the moistness. All yeah. right, well, if it's going to take about three hours in the oven, I think I have time to go and catch a rehearsal of the Master Dancers of Ballet. Yeah, can I come? Mm -hmm. uh, I think you have to finish your boy's job. Please, because it's <laughs> oh. always me left behind who has to clean <laughs> up the sorry. kitchen, right? I will come and help you soon. Yeah, yeah. I'll see you. Have fun. Bye. Take care. consecration ceremony because they have just built a new family temple and before they can even lay the floor tiles they have to bless the ground first. Everything you see here is part of each traditional ceremony. The flags, the umbrellas are basically to beautify the environment and to glorify the gods and all this food is to keep the gods happy and well fed. It seems fitting that this blessing ceremony is taking place at a ceremonial umbrella factory. Balinese society is above all ritualistic, and these ceremonial umbrellas are used in a variety of rites. At one time, umbrella color represented one's rank and caste in society. Hinduism, Buddhism, and animism merge into a religion that is uniquely Bali. I get a glimpse of a stunning example of Balinese spirituality as the consecration of a new building continues with an offering to the gods. I'm on my way to meet Panji for a rehearsal of the Master Dancers of Bali. And dance is a very important part of Balinese culture. It represents creativity and it also represents power, inner beauty and wisdom. Dance is one of the most important aspects of Balinese life. It serves as entertainment and ritual. It marries myth, history, and religion. Panji explains that many dances tell stories from the epic poem Ramayana, or act out the eternal struggle between good and evil. I just think it's beautiful. 